Chroma key lighting is pretty difficult to do right. You need to not only have the right camera setup, but you also need the perfect lighting to make sure your actors match the lighting of your intended background. You also need to ensure that the background in question is three-dimensional and convincing, and you also need your actors a good distance away from the green or blue screen you're using. Ensure they don't accidentally cast a shadow and create a weird silhouette. So it should come as no surprise that not every movie gets it right. Here are 10 green and blue screen effects gone horribly wrong. And before we get started, make sure you subscribe to CBR for cool vids like this one, delivered to you daily. Star Wars prequels. The whole list could have probably been filled with specific moments from Star Wars. We've decided to limit the list to just one entry. When George Lucas made the prequels, he insisted on pushing what technology could do in order to get his vision across. The downside was that filming nearly every scene in the movie on a chroma key screen and including masses of visual effects in every shot that wasn't on one led to a very rubbery, artificial world at best and made the characters look like they were standing in front of a 2D picture at worst. From the arena battle of Attack of the Clones to the four hour long battle on the lava planet of Mustafa, precisely nothing looks like it's actually there, not even the actors. Thankfully, the more recent Star Wars films haven't abused chroma key quite as much. The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl in 3D. Robert Rodriguez is the man behind Sin City, a film which along with the other Frank Miller comic movie 300 is a lesson in how to do green screen and digital effects right. He's also the man behind Shark Boy and Lava Girl, which is wrong in pretty much every capacity. More or less, the entire film is layered with CG shots gone wrong. The worst of all though is the green screens that the movie uses throughout its entire runtime. Not one of them looks remotely real, and worst of all is that it doesn't really even match the monstrous CG creations cooked up for the film. That coupled with some cringe fully delivered lines of dialogue, and all that bad special effects made for a less than great movie. Spy Kids 3D, game over. No, we're not done picking on Robert Rodriguez. Before making Shark Boy and Lava Girl, he tried his hand at 3D with the third Spy Kids movie to a very similar effect. While any of the Spy Kids movies could have been used in place of this, we don't think that there's much worse than a 3D movie with some of the flattest keyed in backgrounds we've ever seen. While later, better movies like Avatar would use 3D and depth to the world and would use green screens to tremendous effect, early movies like Spy Kids not only don't hold up, but were poor at the time too. It's important to note that Robert Rodriguez was using blue screens to great effect in other movies, but for some reason the Spy Kids movies fell very, very short. Labyrinth. Rather than using giant marionettes in this movie a la Toho movies, Labyrinth decided the best way to make the puppets dance was to have them operated by men fully covered in black on a black background. While the puppets dancing themselves don't look bad, after all this technique is used in theater all the time, what looks simply horrendous is the appalling backdrop they're dancing on. It neither looks like the puppets are standing on it, nor does it look like the actress is standing on it. For a movie with great visual and fantastic practical effects, this is one attempt at chroma keying that was just unbelievably awful. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull One of the things that the Indiana Jones films gets praised for is their approach to practical effects and sets. The stunts were always done by real people and the special effects looked organic. Indiana Jones was like a cross between an epic stunt show and an old movie serial. This was completely lost in the fourth entry, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. While the movie isn't terrible, the overabundance of CGI including this awful green screen car chase sequence looked downright awful when compared to the other, much older films. The worst part was that Steven Spielberg initially said that the movies were going to make use of practical effects the same way the original movies did. Unfortunately, that was not what we got. Jupiter Ascending. Perhaps the only thing scarier than the Wachowski's ability to direct Academy Award winning actor Eddie Redmayne to the worst performance of his career are the ever present, but never quite convincing, green screen backgrounds in Jupiter Ascending. Jupiter Ascending uses the Phantom Menace approach to chroma key, which is that as much as possible should be CG'd in post. While the Wachowskis have been known for their use of CGI techniques such as bullet time that inspired a wave of action movies, Jupiter Ascending unfortunately is less groundbreaking and more regressive. For a movie that features the gold-bearded Channing Tatum soaring through the air, it would really help if the audience believed that the sky was actually there. The Hobbit the Hobbit trilogy suffered from a lot of problems behind the scenes, one of the major ones being that Peter Jackson being put in a director's seat at the last minute and generally not having a clue what he was doing throughout the entire production of the movie. As a result, the big sets and brilliant costume design were largely replaced with CG backgrounds and objects that were put in behind the scenes. As with most movies that overuse green screen effects, the end result was half of a movie just not looking like it belonged there. While certainly not the worst example of bad green screening, so much of The Hobbit looked artificial and the movie being stretched out from two films to three, the budget was spread thinner. It's not Peter Jackson's fault, all those backstage issues ultimately led to the movie looking far, far worse. Star Trek Insurrection Insurrection is one of the many Star Trek films. The grand finale of the film was originally going to utilize a blue screen, however they were unable to get the desired effect. So rather than actually attempting to do anything new with the set, they just left the blue screen up. As a result, we get to see Picard, Worf, and crew fighting bad guys on a spaceship primed with a chroma key. 
Not only is this incredibly noticeable, it doesn't look right on camera. There's no reason for the blue to be there, and rather than being a mistake that was easily covered, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. We could have taken most of the shots from this movie as a pretty good example. At some point, superhero movies decided that the city wasn't exactly important unless it was being destroyed. Batman v Superman is plagued with obviously CGI'd cities in the background, with nearly all important action shots being filmed on green screen. Judging by the behind the scenes footage of Justice League, that doesn't look like it'll be changing anytime soon. So it looks like we're gonna be seeing a lot more Batman walking through obviously computer generated landscapes. With that said, it's not the worst use of chroma key on this list, and it's certainly nowhere near as bad as the Green Lantern. Making use of a lot of blue screens and a fully CG costume is the god-awful Green Lantern movie. Not only were they keyed in backgrounds roughly the same quality as an early era PS3 cutscene, but the suit itself that was also keyed in was similarly awful. Rather than looking like the Green Lantern was floating above a video game background, it instead looked like Ryan Reynolds' severed head was floating around the movie, only just looking like it was attached to the costume. While movies like Batman v Superman and The Hobbit had poorly integrated CG, it can't even compare to the Green Lantern special effects, which were so bad they were even even mocked by Ryan Reynolds' later superhero movie and actual success, Deadpool. Please don't make the super suit green or animated. So there you have it. Are there any others you wish we'd mentioned? Leave us a comment and let us know. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and check out the rest of our channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to CBR for cool vids about movies, action heroes, gaming, comics, pop culture, and more.